So welcome to the launch video of the version 22 of the Human Protein Atlas. We will in this video discuss some of the new features in this new version of the Human Protein Atlas. So first an introduction to the version 22. We have now been working 20 years to create this uh, resource. Uh, and the consortium is responsible for an open access knowledge base for all the human proteins in cells, tissues, organs and blood. We have created more than 10 million images using the in-house generated antibodies. And this means that this is one of the world's largest efforts to generate tissue images. We also have created a lot of different data resources in the form of sections. Today we have 10 separate sections spanning from tissues to metabolic enzymes. Right now we have more than 5 million web pages which is updated annually. We have more than 10 million annotated tissue images as I said and we also have more than 800 in-house uh, generated publications. So the version 22 uh, has a lot of new features. We're going from 10 to 12 different sections and we will now go through some of the major new features of the version 22. And I give the word then to Cecilia Linskog to talk about the multiplex tissue atlas. Thank you, Matthias. I will present a new multiplex tissue profiling that adds more detailed data to the tissue section. The workflow is built upon six-plex immunofluorescence, where we have chosen a panel of five markers outlining specific structures in the different tissue types, and then we stay in this five-plex panel together with an unknown protein that we want to map to a particular structure. And the candidates are chosen based on existing data using immunohistochemistry profiling on the human protein atlas, as well as reanalysis of single-cell RNA sequencing data. And we have currently done this analysis on testes, where we're outlining the expression to specific parts of the spermatogenesis, as well as kidney, where we want to look at different types of tubules and structures in the glomeruli. And here is the five-plex panel that we're using for kidney, where we're outlining the different tubules, proximal tubules, distal tubules, and collecting ducts, as well as markers for podocytes and endothelial cells. Here are examples of two different proteins in kidney that we have mapped using this workflow. First, we have FXYD4, which is expressed in collecting ducts, overlapping with the marker aquapurin2. And then we also have uromodulin, which is expressed in a subset of distal tubules that partly overlaps with CASR, which is expressed in distal tubules. And now I will hand over to Kalle from Feilitsen, who will present the structure section. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, my name is Kalle von Feilitsen. I'm Head of Informatics and Data Handling in the Human Protein Atlas project. I will now present the protein structure section that is new in HPA version 22. Within the protein structure section, we show 3D structure models of all of the proteins. We have experimental structures from Protein Data Bank, and we have predicted models from AlphaFold2. We do also integrate genetic variants, both clinical variants and population variants. And we visualize the HPA antibody binding sites where the antigens are mapped into these protein structures. This is how the protein structures are presented on the protein atlas, where we can see the predicted one and the experimental one side by side. We have in the bottom part, we have tools to toggle or interact with these protein models. By default, they are colored by confidence in each position, but you can toggle this to show color by structural features and also by chain name. And you can turn on the view of the antibody binding sites. In this case, we see two HPA antibodies or two antigens, one shown in green and one shown in red. You can turn on the display of clinical variants, uh, here shown in pink. That's amino acids with clinical significance. And you can show the population variants, that's amino acids that's variable within the human population. You can also turn on uh, auto-rotate 
to make the molecule rotate uh, automatically or you can zoom and rotate the molecule freely with your mouse and you can display the protein structures in full screen. With that, I would like to hand over to Cheng. I will now introduce the updated cell line section of the Human Protein Atlas. We have now extended it to a separated section with much more information included. This section now includes transcriptomic expression profiles for more than 1,000 cell lines collected from 35 sites in the human body and 26 different cancers. This allows us to explore if a gene is enriched in a particular human cell line or cell line group that derives from a specific cancer type. In addition, we also compared each of the cancer cell line with their original cancer to see how similar their RNA expression are, also to check how much the cancer-enriched genes are elevated in the specific cell line. Based on this, we proposed the best cell line model for each cancer. Thank you, Sheng. My name is Fredrik Edfors, and I'm thrilled to introduce the new disease blood atlas section to you. The aim of this initiative is to visualize plasma protein profiles for a number of our most important diseases. This first release focuses on cancer and is based on blood samples from more than 1,400 cancer patients obtained from the Swedish UCAN Biobank. Early and accurate diagnosis is critical in cancer precision medicine since it can drastically improve the overall prognosis of the patient. This requires the implementation of methodologies that can determine protein levels with both high precision and robustness. In the disease blood atlas, we have profiled 12 different cancers, including some of the most common ones. We have used two well-suited emerging technologies to support advancements in precision cancer medicine. These are the antibody-based proximic extension assay and mass spectrometry-based targeted proteomics. Each approach can quantify proteins in multiplex with very precise readout from just a few microliters of blood. The approaches are capable of, capable of handling large cohorts with great quantitative precision. In the target proteomics procedure, we include stabilized to labeled protein fragment standards, which allow us to measure absolute protein concentrations in the medium to high abundant range with excellent analytical reproducibility. Here you can see the absolute concentrations of the protein FCM2, which is elevated in AML, quantified across all 12 different cancers. Over to you, Lynn. Thank you, Fredrik. My name is Lynn Fagerberg, and I will continue to talk about the proximity extension assay results. Here we show protein expression levels across 12 cancers for almost 1500 proteins. And one example is the FLT3 protein, which has much higher expression in acute myeloid leukemia compared to all other cancers. This is the pipeline that we have been using to classify patients with different types of cancers. It is based both on differential expression analysis, where we compare the expression profile of a protein in one cancer to all other cancers, as well as a machine learning approach where we use multiple protein expression profiles to build the disease prediction model. Using this approach, we were able to identify a panel of 83 proteins associated with each of the cancers that we used to classify the 12 different cancer types. In the disease section of the Human Protein Atlas, you can click on each of these 83 panel proteins and see the results across all cancers. You can also get a longer list of proteins associated with each cancer type. Finally, these are five examples of proteins that we use in the cancer prediction model, each with elevated protein expression in at least one type of cancer. So now back to you, Matthias. Thank you, Lynn. And now, finally, some conclusions and acknowledgements. So the new version 22 of the Human Protein Atlas contains a lot of new features, as you just heard, but we're also happy to have a lot of new data on cell lines and single cell analysis. We are grateful to the Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation for the main funding of this consortia, but we're also grateful to some other funding that is uh, shown here. The HPA team consists of a lot of different groups, and here is some of the group leaders listed. But over the years, more, almost 700 people have been working in the consortia 
uh, and we are grateful for all the efforts from these people. So uh, with that, I want to thank you for listening to the uh, launch video of version 22 of the Human Protein Atlas and I hope that you enjoy exploring the new data and the human protein. Thank you very much.